the thing is right now more than ever people need copywriters like everyone is hopping online all businesses are realizing the potential of this online space and they need content and that's where we come in as copywriters so this might sound a little out there but the biggest challenge probably is people copywriters not knowing which space they should be in which niche they should be in and that you know that being the biggest problem is actually a blessing in a way because you have so many opportunities to choose from and a lot of the people that do come to me they don't know where to get started hey have you been thinking about copywriting if you're considering on becoming a copywriter maybe you're just laying awake at night thinking there's got to be a better path there's got to be a better way there's got to be a way i can make money online that's not going to cost me a fortune in inventory and staff and, and rental fees well you're in the right place my name is andrew and this is digital nomad journey where we support digital nomads and remote workers seeking the laptop lifestyle and being location independent right now i interview a total pro her name is nav and yahoo finance actually marked her as one of the top 10 copywriters doing things differently we had a fantastic chat. We talked about success, we talked about struggles, we talked about challenges, and we talked about copywriting. You're gonna to wanna to check this out. Right on, Nav. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Nav is a copywriter and mentor for those starting their copywriting business. She is the creator of Writers Freedom Academy where she shows individuals how to start and grow their copywriting business from scratch. She works with all types of people from around the world and is super inclusive with the people she works with. She has also been featured on Yahoo Finance under the top 10 copywriters doing things differently. Nav, thank you for being here. Welcome to Digital Nomad Journey. Yay, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited just to talk to you and catch up with what you've been up to. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. So why don't we start things off with uh, uh, sharing where you're at since uh, we live in a very funny COVID world these days in 2020 at the time of this filming. Where are you? So I'm in Toronto. Um, I've been here for just the past eight months, but I do, you know, I'm trying to stay in one place as much as possible, but it is really difficult right now because I love just moving around as much as possible. So it's been a little tough, but I love it here. Um, great community. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I hear you. I'm, I'm just outside of Ottawa right now and just finalized some plans going to Montreal for a couple months after this. I've never been to Montreal, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So do you have any plans on where you would go to next when things start relaxing a little bit? Oh, I have no idea. That's the thing. Like, I don't, I want to make big plans, but also I don't know. I don't know. I have a, I've signed up for a few masterminds in uh, 2021. So that requires traveling to the States, but I don't know. It can get canceled. I'm scared to book any hotels or anything. So we'll see. <laughs> Been there, done that. It's a very uncertain time. So why don't we dive into things here and let's take uh, everyone back to the very beginning of your journey. How did you start out? Why don't you take us back to the, the very early days uh, before you started working as a remote worker and uh, discovered this remote lifestyle? Uh, how did you discover copywriting? Why copywriting? And uh, uh, bring us up to where you are today. Wow. I like when I first got started, I did not even know copywriting was a thing. It kind of just fell into my lap somehow. So I was still in university, finishing my Bachelor of Science degree, you know, thinking that's what I wanted to do. And then I signed up for the site called Fiverr. I'm sure everyone listening knows what I'm talking about, Fiverr, Upwork and I actually left that site for like six months and then all of a sudden I get a notification on my, my phone, this thing, um, and someone is like, hey, we need a blog post for our website. I'm like, what is happening? I was so confused. I had no idea what was happening. And then I just started, you know, looking at this person. I did not, I was talking to my friend at that time. We thought it was a scam. We're like, why would someone pay you to write 500 words? We honestly thought it was a scam, but I'm like, okay, hey, let me just do it. I had a few extra time in between my exams. I did it and he paid me. It was like 20 bucks. I'm like, I just made $20 by writing something that took me like 30 minutes tops. I was on top of the world, even though it was just $20, but I had made it just sitting in my, in the library. Cause I was studying for my exams. So I just did it on the side. 
And a few weeks later, he's like, hey, can we hop on a call? I'm like, no. Like, what is this? Why do you want to get on a call with me? I thought it was super creepy at the time. <laughs> but I'm like, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. What, what year was this? What, when would this have been? What year? Um, 2019. 2018. 2018. 2018. That's when I got started. Yeah. So we got on a call. He's like, hey, you are the best writer we have had so far. I've like written just a few blog posts for their website. It was a health related website. So that's kind of how I got started. Um, and yeah, he's like, we want to hire you. So I signed a contract. I couldn't believe it was happening because he told me, you know, this was all remote. You can work while you're in school. I was super excited. I was really like on top of the world that someone like that would be hiring me and I didn't have to go outside of my dorm room to make some extra cash. So I was super excited. However, you know, I soon realized they were undercharging me a lot for the effort that I was putting in. Someone who is, you know, I put a lot of work into it and just to find out that others were getting paid more. I mean, at this time, I was just grateful that they were paying me, but I knew that I, my work was worth more. So I just start, you know, I talk to them. They're like, no, we're not going to give you a raise or anything. Um, so that was a little disappointing, but that's kind of how I got started in the world of copywriting. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I really appreciate you sharing that, that perspective with us though, however, because to me, I'm hearing a win-win scenario there because your eyes were open to the possibilities and the potential of being able to make money right from your laptop, right from your smartphone, right from your tablet, where, where, wherever you want to be. You know, in your case, you were in the library. You had, you had some time in between your studies. You were able to uh, make a quick $20, which, yeah, isn't a lot of money. But it really actually opened up your eyes to the possibilities. And I feel like any remote worker slash digital nomad uh, will will relate to that because the first time you you created value for a client or an employer, uh, and uh, and then all of a sudden some money showed up your way. Uh, that there is there is something to be said with like this is the future. This is where we're going. These knowledge we're we're becoming a global community of knowledge workers where just a few clicks of the button uh, brings a lot of value to a brand or or an influencer, and uh, and then you're able to. Um, uh, create a, uh, uh, you're able to create a business model where you're creating income for yourself and you're helping them grow their brand. And that, to me, that just sounds like a win-win. So for the viewer watching this right now, who perhaps doesn't know much about copywriting, can you really give us a breakdown and introduction to what copywriting is? Where, where is the value that copywriting brings to the table? Wow. Yeah. Great question. Copywriting has been around forever. And I'm surprised that I did not even know what a copywriter was because any type of content we see around us, any types of, you know, advertisements that the content written on those advertisements, all of that is copywriting. So it's essentially content with the purpose of selling. So at the end, you know, you will find a little call to action depending on wherever you are reading this piece of copy but yeah that's essentially what it is content used to sell with the purpose of making sales so i definitely agree you know my experience win-win i'm super grateful that i was introduced to this incredible world even though i was you know not paid what i expected that's how it got started for me so the biggest thing i did was take on that opportunity not just be scared to put it away, be like, what is this? But I dived in, you know, got on a call with him and it was like the CEO of that company. So that's something I would have never had done. And the thing is right now, more than ever, people need copywriters. Like everyone is hopping online. All businesses are realizing the potential of this online space and they need content. And that's where we come in as copywriters. So yeah. And it's just going to explode from here. We're, we're just seeing, this is just the humble beginnings in my, in my honest opinion. I, I wrote about this in my book, the fact that uh, Elon Musk is working on the Starlink project and Google's working on Project Loon. 
Uh, Elon's uh, Starlink project just recently completed the first beta test of uh, beaming Wi-Fi down from satellites. And some people were reporting massively high speeds, like 200 megabytes per second. So we're, we're not that far away. We're, some, some futurists are predicting 2024. By the time we get to 2024, 2024 every square meter, every square foot, how, what have you, will be, will be covered with uh, high-speed internet. And so uh, we're going to see an explosion of content because you're going to have a lot more people accessing the internet, a lot more people looking for content, asking questions, looking to be entertained, and you're going to need that many more copywriters. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think you're probably in a pretty good niche here. And if you're watching this video right now because you're interested in becoming a copywriter, or you already are a copywriter and you're looking to refine your skills, I think uh, I think you're in a really great niche, and I think uh, it's going to be a growing uh, a growing market for a very long time. Uh, so, uh, if you had to, if you had the opportunity to offer a, a the number one top tip for a copywriter, uh, a copywriter that's probably pursuing a remote working and remote living lifestyle, what would that be? If you had to narrow it down to one, I'm sure you got dozens, but if you had to narrow it down to one top tip for a copywriter, what would that be? Um, the biggest tip I could probably give someone working from home is to try to find a community of like-minded people. I believe that's super important. You know, I actually talked about this last night on my Instagram, how loneliness can hit pretty hard, especially, you know, um, when you're just at home doing your own thing. That would be like my biggest tip. Try to find a community, find people, like-minded people around you. Um, and that doesn't have to be, you know, people in person. That can be on Facebook groups, inside of online mastermind groups. That's great advice. And in, in, in preparation of this interview, I was, I was watching your, your Instagram stories and I saw your, you do that post and had a little chuckle because, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I guess I am watching this on a Friday nights by myself while I'm working away, <laughs> getting ready for an interview. But you know, I mean, it's everything, everything in life is pros and cons. And I absolutely love being a digital nomad. I absolutely love having the freedom of being able to fold up my laptop and move locations because maybe my current location is no longer favorable for whatever reason. And, uh, and I can, I can talk until I'm blue in the face about all the, the pros, but yeah, sometimes this lifestyle can be a little isolating and I agree with you finding a community uh, is, is really a great idea to keep that mental health um, component in check. And it's super easy these days with Facebook groups and uh, different online uh, chat groups and whatnot. I agree with you. So um, can you recommend any communities uh, that are copywriters that uh, we can share? And I should quickly say too, that for anyone watching this YouTube video, if you're, if you hear a resource or something we discussed that you want to learn more about, I'm going to make sure to include all the links for you in the description below. Honestly, they're everywhere. Even if you just go on Facebook, type in copywriter group, click on groups, a handful are going to pop up, join some, you know, figure out what people are talking about in those groups. I have learned so much more by joining communities like that, especially inside of Facebook groups, um, even Reddit groups. You know, I used to think Reddit was just filled with spam, but it's such a good place for you to find information, see what's trending. So yeah, definitely. Um, I believe there's Copywriters Club on Facebook that I'm in, which is really good. You know, a lot of the times these Facebook groups avoid you know self-promotion which is really good because you don't want to go in a group and just see other people promoting themselves so if you're you know looking for a value-filled group facebook is a great place for that um you can also join my community join me on instagram <laughs> so yeah perfect and really good point there i'm glad that you snuck that in there too because a lot of these facebook communities communities have rules because they're trying to keep, uh, keep a high quality conversation and discussions in there. And there are a lot of communities out there that will allow self-promotion. And then there's a lot of communities that uh, will frown upon that. And you're going to get, you're going to get booted out of their community before you even get started. So one thing that I'd love to ask you is that uh, sometimes we feel pain when we think about certain mistakes that we've made. But uh, it, I mean, I know I, I certainly feel a lot of that, that sting, that pain when you think of certain mistakes that you make in your past. But I'm also extremely grateful for mistakes that I've made in my past because they've helped shape who the person I am uh, today and, and the, uh, the value that I bring to the marketplace today. If I, I wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for some very painful 
very, uh, very expensive mistakes that I've made in the past. So I'm curious if there's maybe a mistake that you've made that sure, it was terrible in the moment, but, uh, but looking back now, you can say, you know what, I'm really glad that happened. Uh, because uh, I think people learn from their mistakes and, uh, and I'm curious what you got. <laughs> every single day, every single day I am making some sort of mistake, but I think that's what I signed up for. You cannot be scared to make mistakes and a lot of them, yes, have been costly, but I have learned more from the ones that have costed me a lot than anything else. For example, investing in you know the wrong people, making bad investments i like at the moment i was like what have i done but looking back those are the things that helped me grow the most like for example i can tell you i posted something on my instagram it wasn't now i realize like i had made a mistake it was just someone told me hey you shouldn't be posting about that i had made a mistake but now when i go on it i'm like super careful of what I'm posting because I know I have this audience who's looking, but you know, I shouldn't let that stop me from expressing how I'm feeling, expressing my opinions, values. So definitely a little balance between the two. So yeah. <laughs> no, I, I can appreciate that actually. That's a good point. I mean, even Joe Rogan recently had to actually post an apology on his Instagram because he said something during the Joe Rogan Experience podcast that was proven later on proven false. And uh, you raise a really good point there that you, you want that healthy balance of being authentic, being yourself, being your raw, authentic self, because that's what people are there for. That's they're there to consume who you are. However, you've got the, the responsibility that you that you are perhaps influencing people's thoughts and feelings about certain things. And you want, certainly want to make sure that you're sharing content that's accurate and, and no way misleading. So I, I can actually really appreciate you pointing that out. Thank you. So. Right now, we live in a very challenging time. It's November 2020 at the, uh, the, the day of this recording. Actually, for our American friends, I believe the American election has just been finalized. Joe Biden has been declared the, uh, the president, and the, uh, America has the first ever uh, black uh, vice president of Asian descent. So congratulations to all my American friends. Uh, it, it seems like this was the election that would, that would just never end. <laughs> but um, but uh, I'm... I wanted to ask if you've been able to recognize any challenges that new copywriters have, have been faced with recently and, uh, and maybe something like a challenge or obstacle that tends to rear its ugly head on a regular basis. And what can a copywriter do in spite of those challenges to, to still achieve success and overcome those obstacles? This might sound a little out there, but the biggest challenge probably is people, copywriters, not knowing which space they should be in, which niche they should be in. And that, you know, that being the biggest problem is actually a blessing in a way, because you have so many opportunities to choose from. And a lot of the people that do come to me, they don't know where to get started. So, you know, and it's, a challenge because you know a lot of these people are now coming online so more niches more industries are opening up so I wouldn't even view it as a challenge but it can be it can be confusing for those who are just getting started not knowing where to start because there are so many opportunities and you know that's the great thing about it that there are opportunities so instead of you know being confused I would suggest you know choose some that you enjoy choose something that's you know profitable I guess we can talk about more tips later on in this interview but I wouldn't even view it as a challenge however you know there's two sides of everything there's a lot of copywriters struggling because a lot of businesses have gone out of you know business they're losing a lot of money so they've shut down and on the other side, there are businesses coming online now more than ever, and they need copywriters. So, you know, it's how you view it. If you're struggling right now, you know, it might be time to change the niche you're in maybe, or, you know, there's a lot of things you can do to still find clients because like, trust me, they're out there. A lot of people now are killing it in this game. Um, 
I know, like personally for me as well, more people are reaching out to me and some of my students, more people are reaching out to them more than ever in some niches that we did not even expect. So that's awesome. That's awesome. But I do know copywriters who, you know, work for more brick and mortar stores since they're shutting down the first person they're going to get out of their team is sadly a copywriter especially if it's a brick and mortar store so that's the first person they're going to let go because you know they cannot they don't have the budget for them so that's why if you're in that situation try to find businesses who are coming online or even suggest the businesses that you're working with right now to look into the online space and if you're a copywriter help them make that transition like they're going to be so grateful for you if you can help them make that transition and it might seem like a lot of work in the moment, but you know, if you're in it for the long run, super worth it. If you can help businesses create content for the online space, because a lot of these businesses don't even know that this space exists. So as a copywriter, you know, try to talk with the clients that you're working with, let them know, Hey, I will help you make that transition into the online space. And, you know, maybe don't charge them because it's a hard time for everyone. But once they're up and running, that's a good time for you to just grow while they're growing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe even perhaps ne uh, negotiate some kind of commission structure, too, so that uh, if the business owner is if the client's doing well, then you do well in turn. And it, that that would remove some of the risk uh, from the uh, the employer side. This is a really good point, And I'm. I'm I'm glad that you brought it up because I think this is a fundamental topic that any digital nomad or remote worker should be talking about, not just copywriters. Uh, we, we, we witnessed a fundamental shift in society in the last, what is it, eight, nine months now, nine months that, uh, that no one ever saw coming. No, no crystal ball would have been able to reveal this, what 2020 has delivered to us. And, uh, and I'm actually going to throw a card up here uh, for, the, for you to check out a YouTube video that I, watched, uh, that I created not that long ago called the, uh, the Top 14 Markets that are doing well and expected to do well in the coming years because the, the market has shifted. The market has shifted, and I couldn't agree with you more whether you're a copywriter or not. If you focus on the niches and the markets that are, that are experiencing growth right now and are expected to grow in the, the coming years, there is a ton of evidence out there that is screaming at all, all of us, if you're paying attention, that there are certain business models that are going to do exceedingly well. And they're not just going to be hiring a copywriter. They're probably going to be hiring a team of copywriters. Uh, but you have to be paying attention to what the marketplace is doing because certain businesses are going to thrive and hire like crazy. I, I myself, I'm up to my eyeballs in clients right now. And for the first time last month, I think it was, I started turning clients away. And it's because I'm in a growing, in-demand, highly sought-after niche. Wow. It's uh, it it is what it is, and and unfortunately, you're you're right. Like this, this has been a very hard year for a lot of brick and mortar businesses. And every time I uh, I don't watch a lot of news, but every time I turn on the TV, I feel like there's another company that that uh, kicks the bucket, another uh, family operation that uh, that couldn't survive, and uh, restaurants, and so many. There's so many businesses right now that are struggling. So you, you make a really good point there. Um, how about how about daily rituals, daily habits? I'm curious. If a copywriter maybe will uh, will will expand their chances of success if they adopted certain daily rituals and routines that perhaps you found have worked really well for you, um, could you share any um, any regular habits or rituals with us? I love my morning routine more than anything. So you know, I wouldn't really call myself a morning person, but I do have a routine anytime I wake up. You know. Mm -hmm not anytime I wake up, I wake up every day. <laughs> but when I wake up, I make sure to go through a routine for myself. When we work with clients, it's so important that you take some time for yourself in the morning. Before you start, you know, replying to your emails, getting on calls with clients, take some time for yourself before you worry about anyone else. And that's just, you know, that's not you being selfish. That's not you being you know, worrying about yourself, it's important that you take care of yourself first before you can help those clients. And that's just going to help your clients even more. It honestly is as simple as that. Take care of yourself first so that you can take care of your clients. So for me, 
writing is probably the first thing I try to do just for myself, like journaling, um, my in my gratitude journal, I have that five minute gratitude journal, which I love just for five, you don't even need a fancy journal, just take like, you know, a pen, pencil, and a piece of paper, let me grab one right here, you know, just start writing things you're grateful for. It just sets that tone for the rest of the day. So that's something I love doing and recommend to everyone. And another thing I really like to do, this actually happens the night before. So during the night, I will create a list called the PTT list, plan tomorrow today. So I will make a list of six things that I want to get done the next day. So three of those things will be business related. Three of them are working out on um, uh, personal things like working out. So in those business things, you know, things that are going to move the needle forward for me, those are the things that I make sure to get done. And then three personal things as well. So as copywriters, you know, what can those three things look like? Maybe it's reaching out to more clients, catching up with past clients, doing client work, whatever that looks like. Try to schedule at least three things because that just helps you from getting overwhelmed. So that would be the ritual, just morning routine and having a good night routine as well. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a big believer in morning rituals. And I couldn't agree with you more that you can't give what you don't have. That's what I like to remind myself, you can't give what you don't have. And yeah, you got to fill that cup up before the demands of the world start grabbing from you, because that's exactly what's going to happen when those clients come calling. Oh, and they, uh, when they, they, they want something, they're going to let you know. <laughs> Yeah, so I, yeah. I completely get it. So uh, you watching this video right now, if you're enjoying this, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm absolutely obsessed with getting the very best digital nomads and remote workers on this channel like Nav. Uh, once again, thank you, Nav, for being here. And, uh, and I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to be on this journey with all of you because this is a really exciting time to be a digital nomad and a remote worker. And I see, I see nowhere but up. Uh, for all of us uh, location independent enthusiasts, uh, no matter what, no matter if you're working at home to be close to your pets or take care of a, a sick family member or an elderly family member, uh, or just the fact that maybe perhaps you want to be able to fold up your workspace and, and get somewhere safe because maybe there's a natural disaster nearby and this year hasn't been kind uh, with, with regards to natural disasters as well. But um, it's it's a very exciting time to be a digital nomad. Could you be, would you be able to um, let us know what, what there might be one thing, if you could go back before becoming a copywriter, would, is there one thing that you wish you had known ahead of time? So you're talking to that new copywriter right now. Is there one thing that you wish you had done differently? And I know, I get it, we all learn from our mistakes, but what do you wish you would have known before you started copywriting? For me, it would just be taking action. I know we like hear that all around, you know, take action, take action, take action. But, you know, I spent six months choosing a website name for my copywriting business. Six months before, I that, before getting started. So that's like, that's what I tell everyone, like worry about a website and everything later. You know, if your main goal right now is to get clients, what are you doing to get clients? Like a website may seem like the most important thing, but in the big picture of things, what else are you doing? Are you, you know, learning, increasing your copywriting skills? Are you making cold calls? Are you doing cold emails? It's like, it might sound crazy for me to say that, you know, worry about a website later, but everyone that I talk to and the biggest messages I get, you know, what should go inside of my portfolio, what should go on my website. Yes, these things matter, but work on what's more important and those things will just build as you go. So don't worry because my website name has changed 20 times. I probably have 10 domain names inside of GoDaddy. <laughs> Not even kidding because I always think, you know, this is the last time, this is final. Then two weeks, I come up with a new service and I want a new domain for it. It's just never gonna, never gonna end. So you just need to keep going, you know, take action. Don't worry about the little things like what color your logo should be. Pick something and just go with it. 
what I've learned is, you know, I will move so much further by just taking action, messy action, than trying to be perfect. Someone who is trying to be perfect is so far behind me because I took that messy action. And, you know, I'm a Virgo. I don't know, I don't really want to involve astrology into this, but I'm a Virgo. We love being organized. We love, yeah, just being organized. We love being just practical about everything. So I've definitely, you know, had my moments where I wanted to make sure everything was perfect, but you just need to realize nothing will ever be perfect. Like if you sat there and try to correct every single piece of copy, even when you're working with clients, you know, I always suggest this, this can be a bonus little tip, but don't, you know, write the whole piece of copy and then send it to your client. What I like to do is maybe write a paragraph, send it to my client, be like, hey, you know, take a look. Do you like my tone? Does this work? And if they approve, then I move forward. I don't want to write the whole thing and then just have them be like, hey, we don't like this. That's just not helping anyone. So communicate with your client, you know, don't be scared to bother them. It's you're working on their piece of work. They want to know, you know, they want updates. So try to update them as much as possible. If it's even if it's just a headline, be like, hey, this is what I have so far, you know, let me know. And if they tell you, hey, stop messaging me, you're being annoying, then you can back off a little bit. Usually what I found is they love it. If you can keep updating them, sending them, you know, updates. Yeah, that's just another good way to build incredible relationships with your clients. So I even forgot the question. <laughs> I, I, I love that. Well, I, I think I, what I said was, if, what's one thing that you w- wish you learned before copywriting, but uh, you really took that a really wonderful direction. And I, I want to thank you for sharing that because yeah, imperfect action is going to, is going to trump and win out over the perfect dabbler that's paralyzed and isn't doing any action at all. Uh, couldn't agree with you more. And uh, I mean, the analogy that I like to use too is when you want to learn how to swim, are you going to read a book? Or are you going to jump in the damn pool? And and uh, and 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 on that and on that other note, um, I don't even have a website right now, and I'm having the time of my life building Digital Nomad Journey. Some of the most successful and influential and um, brightest minds that I learn from, that I pay attention to, uh, don't have websites. Uh, Sean Cannell, uh, I, I learn a lot about YouTube uh, strategy and marketing and optimization from Sean Cannell. He has multiple YouTube, successful YouTube channels. I think totally he has over 2 million uh, subscribers and he doesn't have a website. So clearly there is a successful model out there that doesn't always have to have a website. And I, I tried to do the WordPress thing a while ago and got got overwhelmed and realized that uh, this is this does not demand my attention right now. Maybe one day, maybe one day I have the domain when I'm ready, but I don't need it right now. So I'm, I really appreciate you you sharing that. That's, that's powerful. I'm curious if uh, you'd be able to share with us if you have anyone in your life that's given you any pushback or given you a hard time or perhaps questioned your your choices with regards to becoming a copywriter. Uh, when I was uh, preparing for the interview, I, I learned that you're, you were pre-med, that you've taken all this incredible high-level education. I can imagine, I, I don't want to jump to conclusions here, that you were, your life was probably on one trajectory and then perhaps you pivoted. Um, did you have any pushback from anyone in your life? And if so, what did you do to deal with that situation? Because I know someone is watching this video right now who is struggling with someone important in their life that's giving them some grief because they want to pursue what's really lights them up and they're passionate about. Sometimes our loved ones can't see what we see. And I'm curious how you were able to handle that if you experienced it. Yeah, I'm so grateful for you even asking this question because I think everyone will have someone in their life where they are questioning everything. And it's sad a lot of the times it's the people closest to us that are going to question everything we're doing. But you know, that's, just comes with you doing something outside of the norm. So of course, you know, it hurt me seeing, you know, doing something that I promised my parents I would do and going through this incredible education and then not pursuing it even more. Like I was supposed to go to grad school, do all of that. And then I'm just like, no, like that's not it for me. And of course I had pushback. You know, my parents did not like that. 
So, you know, again, like grateful for you sharing this information because I wish I had someone to tell me the same thing that you need to just focus on what you are doing and what you want. And sometimes our loved ones, you just have to zone them out. You just have to close your ears and just work. Because the thing you have to realize, our parents, they were born and they grew up in a very different time than us. So their version of success is very different than our now version of success. So I don't even blame my parents. You know, I have every reason to just start blaming everything on them. Like, hey, you guys are not letting me do what I want to do. But I understand that I need to, you know, that I have a different version of success than them. And that's okay. So what I've learned from my mentors, and that's helped massively. Like getting mentors helps with your mindset. And when you're feeling down, having someone to push you forward has helped me a lot. So my mentors always tell me, you know, if your parents start a conversation about, hey, what you're doing, I forgot what they said exactly, but if your parents start, you know, or even your friends or whatever, they want to talk business with you, like, hey, what are you working on? Just shift the conversation, especially if it's people who don't support you, shift the conversation about something that they would enjoy. I hope that made sense. But don't talk to people who you would not want advice from, just switch the conversation. Talk about the weather. <laughs> I don't know. Talk about something else. Because all that's going to do is just bring you down and try to limit those people out of your life as much as possible. And that can be hard, especially if it's people who want to support us, but sometimes their support can actually bring us down if it's, you know, yeah, I hope this is coming across the right way with what I'm trying to say. I think, I think what I'm hearing is that it, everyone should probably get quite good at compartmentalizing their lives, uh, understanding that your loved ones, they're your loved ones. They want the very best for you, but perhaps they don't have the same perspective or the same outlook on life or the same mindset. And so they're, they're not wrong and you're not wrong, but there's, there's a mindset clash yeah. here going on, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's, it's uncomfortable. It's an uncomfortable thing. And it is a question I like to ask because I, I, have to, I have to assume that you watching this video right now, you might be experiencing this right now. And it's incredibly uncomfortable. We get it. And uh, it's something that you have to manage. It's something that you have to grow with and, uh, and no, understand that it's probably not going to stop. But, uh, but uh, they, they, they're your loved ones. They care about you. So how about um, moving things perhaps a little bit more on the how side, because the, the new copywriter or maybe the location-based person who wants to be a copywriter, wants to be a location independent person, uh, doesn't, know, doesn't know where to start, doesn't know where to go. Uh, do you have a favorite tool or resource that makes your lifestyle possible? Because there's a lot of people that do the typical nine to five, get Monday to Friday, and they work for an employer, and, uh, and maybe they're not feeling very satisfied right now. So do you have a, a tool or resource that makes this lifestyle possible that, uh, that you have to share, that you want every copywriter out there to know about? Yes, this is going to be crazy, but your phone right here, pick this thing up and start making some cold calls. <laughs> start, you know, start, pick up the phone. You have such an incredible resource, start using it. Like, you don't need a fancy phone like this. This is like the latest iPhone. I wanted to treat myself a little bit, so I got it. But pick this thing up. Start, you know, looking at businesses in your space. That's the biggest way you can get started right now. If you're in vacation, look at the businesses around you, local businesses, and start calling them. Be like, hey, Try to talk to the owner, you know, get the owner on the call, be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm a copywriter. This is how I want to help you. You know, let's get started. Start conversations with people. That's how you grow. That's how you're going to learn. And the biggest thing you can do is just in your area. You know, there's so many businesses. A lot of them are unfortunately going out of business. So it's it might be hard at this time, but that's what I mean by if you really want to stand out, help them you know, join Instagram, help them create content for their website, help them create content for their social media platforms. So I would suggest, you know, just this good old thing, pick it up, start using it, 
to grow your business. Um, and this doesn't even require like, you know, you creating fancy websites, you worrying about your portfolio. The biggest thing I can tell you is just start talking to people, start talking to your ideal clients. That's how you're going to learn. And it's scary. You know, it's scary at first, I know, but that's how you grow. So I have a challenge, if you don't mind, Andrew, for everyone watching, <laughs> listening, listening or watching. Just pick up this phone, research, you know, businesses near me, choose whatever comes up, call them, find out what they're struggling with when it comes to their content. When I do this, it's surprising how open people are. They want to talk about themselves. They want to talk about their business. You know, let them do that before you start pitching, you know, just have a normal conversation. So five people, five businesses near you, and you might be surprised. A lot of them might be like, hey, yeah, let's do this. Let's start. So I, li I like that. My big <laughs> great, great challenge to get going here. I like that. And, and, and who knows, you might end up starting off the, the new year uh, fighting strong. Uh, you'll be hitting the ground running if you start uh, doing uh, this challenge today. I, I, I agree with you. It's, uh, it's great advice. And I mean, everyone has to go through the suck phase. <laughs> it sucks. It sucks. It just sucks. Nobody likes the suck phase, but you'll be glad you did when you come out on uh, from the other side. So do you have any uh, resources that you turn to for inspiration, podcasts, books, events? Uh, I, I noticed uh, you were sharing some books in some of your social media posts. I'm curious where you go when you want to feel inspired or when you want to learn uh, how to become a better copywriter or when you want to learn how to be a better entrepreneur. Where do you go when you need that little, uh, that little boost or that little bit of inspiration? Yeah, I'm huge with books. In the beginning of 2020, I actually made a challenge for myself to read a book every week because I know the power. Like, I'm sure you've heard of this quote, leaders are readers, leaders are readers. So that really stuck with me. Like, if I want to lead, if I want to start conversations with people, if I want to, you know, influence people, I need to read. And that doesn't mean, you know, you need to pick a book, physical copy. It can also mean audible, um, podcast. I love listening to podcasts. Some of my favorite people, and I feel like Andrew, you and I have talked about him, but Andy Frisella. Yeah. Yep. I love him. I love listening to him. He's a great, great. He has a great podcast. So that would be one. I love one thing, incredible book. The one thing, um, a classic rich dad, poor dad, Love that book. I think everyone should read that. I think that was the first book that I read that really changed. I thought, okay, this is so overrated. You know, I don't want to read this. But honestly, it's popular for a reason because it really challenges you to change your mindset. And I can say, like, that book has really changed a lot for me. Um, Think and Grow Rich, another classic one. Anything by Joe Dispenza. I love him. Um, and yeah, that, that would be like my top 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 favorite books lately not only podcasts but lately i've been really big into audiobooks i've been listening to uh, a, a book called breathe which is fantastic uh, explaining how human beings have basically uh, lost the the art and the science of breathing it's it, i recommend it to anyone i'm just about to finish it it's fantastic and uh, and tony robbins likes to talk about net time n e t no extra time it's so easy to make excuses like, oh, I'm too busy for that. I can't do that. But no, you know, you can find the time if you really want to. Maybe it's on that drive to work or when you're on, on public transit to work, or maybe when you're washing the dishes, you put on the headset and you listen to an episode of on a podcast or a chapter in your audiobook. There's There's definitely ways to squeeze that into your time if you really want to make it happen. So um, yeah. here's a question that I, I really like to ask. Do you have a a low point in your journey? Do you have uh, a moment in your life where it just, it was a total gut punch because right now there's a lot of people that are struggling. It's been a tough year for a lot of people for a lot of reasons. And, uh, and there's, there's a lot of people out there that are feeling stuck. They're feeling left behind. They're frustrated. They think, they think they're, they're going nowhere fast. And I'm curious if there was a low point in your journey that you can share with us so that someone who might be struggling right now watching this video will say, you know what? I might be down right now, but I'm not going to be down forever. 
if if there's some what did you do when you were down to to pick yourself back up again and to find yourself where you are today i mean yahoo finance marked you as the top 10 copywriters doing things differently right and there might have been a low point in your journey where you would have never been able to fathom something like that you know is there a story there that you could possibly share with us for me it was just that shift in mindset that hadn't taken place but it did when i started this whole entrepreneurial journey when i got into copywriting that i really had to you know challenge and push myself out of what i thought i needed so i think the biggest thing for me was just not getting that support i would have had from my you know closest friends my family um and that that can really suck it can really suck when you feel like you're trying to do something but it's it's not it doesn't align with what other people view as success so that was definitely you know different that was definitely something that i had to overcome it was challenging also in the beginning moments i was going through a bad breakup so that that was kind of just added to everything, but that is what forced me to really step outside of my comfort zone and start doing things differently. So I don't regret any of the things that I, you know, have, like I said earlier, like all the mistakes, any of that I do not regret, but you know, I have had a lot of those low moments where it's like, nothing is going my way. It seems like everyone is against me right now. Um, I'm not growing as fast as I want to grow. I'm not booking any clients. And then I see people on Instagram just killing it. And then I realize, you know, that's their highlight reel. That's what they want to show me. And I try my best to show as much as possible. Like if I'm struggling with something, I try to show that to show people that it's not perfect all the time. But it can be hard when you go on social media and everyone just living their best life, you know, booking clients, having their six figure month. So <laughs> it definitely forces you to compare yourself. But I've what I've done is just unfollow as many people that made me feel a way when I saw them on my feed. And, you know, that's not me being again, that's not me, me being selfish. That's just me protecting my energy, realizing that, hey, it's not going to help me if I go on my Instagram and I'm scrolling and I feel like shit. Like this is my home. <laughs> like my Instagram is in a way where I spend a lot of my time or on social media because that's my job. You know, that's, that's what I love doing, but sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. So I feel like I shared so many challenges here, but the biggest thing is just overcoming that feeling when all your friends are now in grad school doing their own thing and then I'm here like what do I do I feel really stuck like I'm trying to make this happen and I know like it's happening like the fact that I was on Yahoo Finance is just proof that I'm making it work I'm making it happen um, I've built an incredible community and all of those things are incredible but sometimes you know when I go on social media I feel like I'm not doing enough so just, you know, getting rid of those people, you know, blocking people if you have to, um, disabling any notifications, just protect your energy as much as possible, so that you can work on the things and create a life and, you know, travel as doing what you love. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, I resonate with everything you just shared there. Thank you. And one of the reasons that I think copywriters really get it you know, I'm not a copywriter myself. I certainly do some copywriting with with uh, my role, but uh, but I wouldn't call myself a copywriter. And the reason why I think copywriters get it is because, in my view, con uh, consumption will always lose out to creation, and copywriters create. And when you're on social media consuming someone else's best life, like you just pointed out. You're consuming someone's content. And some of the best advice that I ever got from my mentor, a very, very successful online entrepreneur, was that for every one hour of you consuming content, you should be spending 10 hours creating content. 
And that's a pretty dr wow. drastic ratio. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have that ratio flipped the other way around. You're probably consuming 10 hours of content for every hour you can, uh, you create content, but uh, that's what copywriters do. They master the art of creating content, valuable content for their clients and their, their employer. And I think, uh, I think copywriters will always have that slight edge, that slight advantage over, over non-copywriters because non-copywriters, maybe, maybe non-copywriters are creating content in other ways. You know, there's videographers and photographers and all kinds of ways to create content. But, um, but ultimately, ultimately, I think what we're talking about here is creation will, will beat out in the long run, will beat out consumption. So I, I really appreciate you, you highlighting that. And yes, thank you for saying that. Unfollow people. <laughs> if you recognize that following this individual or this brand is not doing you any good, it's not making you a better person, then unfollow them. <laughs> it's, the best, it's the best advice anyone could, could take on social media. Uh, so why don't you tell us, what is the Writer's Freedom Academy? Tell us more about that. Yay, I'm so glad you brought that up. So Writer's Freedom Academy is my master program that I have created. And it's gone through a lot of trial and error. I first launched it in February as a little boot camp to see, hey, is this what people actually want? Are people able to get results? So I let a few people in and surprisingly, like 90% of them booked their first clients or they got some sort of success from this boot camp which was huge for me. So I'm like, okay, you know, I need to get this out to more people. I know people are struggling, especially not knowing how to get started with copywriting, fixing your mindset, all of those things is what I included in that boot camp. So I did a little updating of the course, launched it again, had great success with it again, uh, closed it up just so that I can keep updating it. So now it's Writer's Freedom Academy. I'm so grateful that I'm able to help all these people out. Like people have, you know, been able to match their income that they make in their nine to five job. And that for me is huge. That for me is massive that I can help them do this. So yeah, it's a course, it's a program, it's a community for people who want to get started with copywriting, who want to change their mindset first. Like I am huge on that. Yes, I can give you the strategies, I can give you all the tools, but if you do not have the mindset, which I believe a lot of programs leave out, and they just give you the strategies, but if you don't have the right mindset, it's going to be really hard for you to implement these strategies. So that's what I start off with, you know, going through mindset and then helping you how to cold call, cold email, how to build your website once you're ready, build that portfolio. And do it quickly. Like one of the lessons I have in there is how to set up a portfolio in less than 10 minutes. So I'm all about being efficient, but also taking good calculated action towards what it is that you are after. Um, and then sales psychology as well. I cover sales psychology in that course, in that program, which again, I have not seen any other, not that I know of other people do that in this space. Because, you know, if you don't know how to sell yourself as a copywriter, it's going to be hard for you to find clients. You might be an incredible copywriter, but what I found is, you know, we're great copywriters, but some of the times we don't know how to sell ourselves. So that's what I teach you inside of the sales psychology module, how to be a great copywriter, but also how to talk to potential clients, what gets them to buy. So that's huge. Um, also a great community inside of the Facebook, inside of the Facebook group where we celebrate people's wins. So yeah, that's a little bit about Writers Freedom Academy. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. And I'm going to make sure to include the link for uh, NAVS Academy and uh, all the resources that we talked about today in the description below. But uh, that sounds like an absolute amazing program that you put together. It sounds like a labor of love. And I couldn't agree with you more that mindset is a fundamental issue that I'm sure a lot of programs out there ignore or don't address appropriately maybe because you're right the methods and the strategies they're they're not going to do you any good whatsoever if you don't approach it with the right mindset and the right uh, attitude and uh, and I mean I'm I, I, I'm blown away with the interviews that I've seen in the recent couple of years with Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and blah 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 
a lot of these really, really successful entrepreneurs are telling you straight up that they're hiring for attitude and they couldn't really care less where you graduated. They couldn't care yeah. less. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and I'm not bashing traditional education. There's, a, there's always going to be a place for traditional education, don't get me wrong. However, the value of traditional education has been decreasing over recent years and self-education has been increasing. And I think the traditional education model is, is suffering. And uh, thank you, Nav, for putting this amazing copywriting program together for all the, the aspiring copywriters out there in this exciting brand new remote working digital nomad world that we are steaming towards. We are marching towards this world. And like we've already discussed in this awesome chat that uh, there's going to be a huge need in various marketplaces uh, and niches that are going to be desperate for copywriters. And I can imagine it's like any other industry where, you know, the cream rises to the top, where if you really refine your skills and you take an online course that's structured. Sure, I'm sure you could watch a bunch of free YouTube videos. Mm -mm, not going to deny that. YouTube is an amazing platform. Lots of people learn all kinds of things on YouTube, but it's not very structured, is it? Whereas your program will take someone from A to Z and a 90% success rate, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I, I know a few online uh, course creators and, uh, and I think anyone would be blown away with a 90% success rate. So congratulations to you and your students. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that percentage was just from very few people in the beginning boot camp. Okay. I haven't calculated the success rate now, but I can give you a little updated one once I do have one. Fantastic. But yeah, definitely, like you said, YouTube videos. Yes, we can spend hours watching YouTube videos, but if you really have a step-by-step -step process, not only is it going to save you time, which is the biggest asset that you have, like protect your time, um, but also money, just you trying to do things yourself so yeah, definitely, you know, and the greatest thing about copywriting is that's probably the only investment you will make is learning from someone. Like take that in every other business model, you either have to pay for inventory, you have to pay for um, people, pay for maybe a place that you can rent, I don't know. But the great thing about copywriting, very low starting costs. Like you'll essentially only be paying for I don't even know, like a domain once you, if you want to have a website. But other than that, like your education is going to be huge when it comes to getting started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you'll probably need some basic items like a computer, tablet, laptop, or, or a smartphone, yeah, sure. some of the basic stuff. But yeah. uh, I mean, hey, if you're watching this YouTube video right now, I'm guessing you already have those things. So, <laughs> so you're in the right place. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we've talked about success a few times in this chat, and I'm curious how your definition of success has changed over the years. What was your definition of success in the beginning when you were, when you were hustling, you were grinding, you were struggling, loved ones were giving you a hard time? What was, what was your definition? You're, you know, you're doing your pre-med, you're in school, your life was going a certain direction. Your definition of success was probably one thing. How do you compare that to, to today? What's, what's changed? Like, it's crazy. I didn't even, I don't even know if I had my own version of success because I've just been following what society had told me, which is like sad to think about that I did not even know what I wanted. And I can be, you know, to blame for that, for not investing in self-education, like you said, but I don't think we're ever introduced to things like that, even in school. Like they don't tell you, hey, read this book. And it's like, why am I reading hands why am i reading like harry potter which i love harry potter but it's like if i was introduced to something like you know personal development i would have been just so much better off than reading you know what i love harry potter so i'm not even going to compare it to that but like shakespeare you know love him to love him to no hate towards that but i would have just learned so much more if they had told me to read personal development books so yeah, as sad that sad as it sounds, I did not even have my own version of success. I feel like it was just laid out to me, society, parents, just what I saw around me. And then when I stepped into this world of entrepreneurship, copywriting, I realized, hey, like that old model of success is so, like there's flaws in it. There's flaws. I do not want to study for like 10 years just to make how much I'm probably making now. <laughs> 
not to like you know that's not to even brag either it's just to show that it's possible like it's 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 crazy how we're def like we define success so much more differently and then once you step into this world of personal development you realize you're capable of so much more and that's my whole goal like i'm sure that's your goal as well with this podcast to show people what out there like you can travel and work at the same time it's now possible so definitely has changed a lot for me also like you know a lot of people do like to define success with how much you're making but that for me also has completely shifted when i first got started it was like okay once i hit 10k per month i'll be fine or 5k per month i'll be fine but now it's like am i happy happy working with the right people am i you know making an impact with the for the right people in the just working with people that i absolutely love and i'm adding value to them creating an incredible community introducing people helping them change their mindsets so i think now that is what success means for me which is crazy to say that at such a young age but yeah <laughs> I, I, I like that very much. I think the world is shifting towards results-based. We're, we're becoming more of a results-based focused society. And I think that's ultimately a good thing because one of the, one of my moments of realization a few years back was that your, your, your financial uh, compensation is directly proportional to the amount of value you bring the marketplace. And it was like one of those light bulb moments for me. I mean, if you're working at McDonald's, no, I'm not bashing McDonald's here. It's just McDonald's tends to be an entry level position for a lot of people. And you're going to make minimum wage because you can grab almost anyone right off the street, train them a little bit for a couple hours, and then boom, they're, they're capable of doing the job. And now in recent, the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of those jobs disappear because now they've got the touch screen, order computers, self-serve computers now, right? So, so, um, compare that to someone designing a copywriting course and helping many, many people uh, help their clients and imagine the trickle down effect and how much value you're actually spreading out to the marketplace because you put in the work and, the, and, and stepped out of your, you didn't step out of your comfort zone, you expanded your comfort zone, looked at things with a healthier yeah. mindset and now you're creating more value for the marketplace, ultimately making the world a better place. Because I mean, I don't know how many students you have or how many students you will have in the future, but imagine how many clients and companies and businesses are going to benefit by your many, many, many students. And like, you can't even calculate how much value that is. Ultimately, that's net new, that's net positive value, right? That's incredible stuff. So, so yeah, you're, you're talking to the right person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never wanted to have like a ceiling of how much I can make or do or how much value I can add. Just like you said, if what you're doing is easily you know, if someone else can easily do that, I'm sorry to say, but you're not adding much value. So it is, you know, what it is. if you can find a way to add more value into the marketplace and as copywriters, you, know, you are doing something that's huge, especially when you're working with incredible brands who are making a difference in the world, ethical, good brands, whatever, whoever, whatever that means to you. If you're working with brands you truly believe in, not only are you helping yourself, but you're helping just the world in a, as a whole. So, so much value there as well. What are some specific action steps that a person can take right now? They get to the end of this YouTube video and they're like, great, awesome, this is amazing, Nav, wow. Of course, they're gonna wanna take your course, but what else can they do? What, what as soon as this video is over, what can uh, a beginner, uh, what can they what can they focus on right away to uh, really create some momentum and take massive action? What's the what's the first couple things they should focus on? You know, honestly, I don't even want to like promote myself, but I feel like I should. I have so much like free content on my Instagram itself. So, you know, come join me, come, you know, send me a DM, let's talk. I love talking to people through the DMs. I love being able to help as much as I can. So definitely, you know, if you're someone who's looking to get started, send me a DM, I am open to help you. And actually for Andrew, you and your audience, I have a four day course that I don't normally promote. Um, 
you know, I put it out sometimes, but I can reopen it. It's a free course. You know, if you think copywriting is for you, take that course I talk about is copywriting for you, first of all, how much you can make, how to start, so build that momentum. So send me a DM or it might be on my link based on whenever you are watching this, like the link in my bio. So that would be probably the number, just start learning, start developing the skills, start that's how you're going to have that momentum by first learning, but then also when you feel ready and on, you will never feel ready, but learn, feel a little bit confident and then just go, 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 go. But definitely I can send you that link over so you can share it with your audience, Andrew, but just a free day course. Um, yeah. Thank you. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah. I'll make sure we include that link in the description below. Uh, and before we get going here, a couple of last questions not all heroes wear capes. If you could be a hero to anyone, who would that person be? Who is that person that you would want to reach through that screen right now and say, I want to help you? Who is that person? Oh my, it's someone who's just awake at night all the time, just thinking about how they are going to make this thing happen. And when I say that, I'm just thinking about myself because truly my ideal client or the people that I want to help are me, me from the past. So I just view people that I help as me. They're right now, they need all this help they can get and I want to be there to help them. So if you're, you know, just struggling, you have no idea how to even make this thing happen. You don't know how to move forward. You don't know how to build that momentum or maybe you're just confused because, you know, there's so much opportunity out right now so it can be confusing so if that's how you feel you feel like there's just so much information you know find a resource and if that's me that's perfect but find someone that you can learn from because at the end of the day you know you can either spend learning from hundreds of people for example on YouTube watching free content or you can find someone and just follow them see if they you know, have the level of success that you want. If you vibe with them, you know, if you like their energy, if you like how they are, you know, go and learn from those people. Those are the things I look for when I'm looking to invest in mentors. So definitely, you know, if you feel like it's just you against the world, you have no idea how to move forward. Those are the people I want to help because trust me. And also if you're on Fiverr right now or Upwork and you're making 20 bucks a day, like I was, you know, you might feel like that's enough, but I'm talking to those people who know that their worth is, their work is worth so much more. Um, then those are the people I want to help because Fiverr is a great place, but at the end of the day, it's just not the greatest clients on there. You're going to be competing for price. So if you really value your work, if you, you know, want to do this for the long run, get off of Fiverr. Let's talk. I would love to help you um, and how you can set up your own brand. And yeah. Fantastic. And uh, I think you've already mentioned it, but I uh, just want to make sure we cover all our bases here. Uh, if someone wants to reach out to you and contact Instagram's the best method, or is there another way? Instagram's the best. Okay, yeah. perfect. And I'll make sure yeah. I include all the information below. Nav, thank you so much for being here on Digital Nomad Journey. Thank you so much, Andrew. This was amazing. This was so good. So yeah, I love, thanks for wa li listening, watching, whatever you guys are, wherever you guys are doing this. Okay. <laughs> so this is really fun. Thank you so much. Amazing. Amazing. So if you've made it all the way to the end of this interview, I appreciate you. I thank you. And I truly hope that you were able to get some value out of the uh, the copywriting discussion that we just had with uh, Nev. Uh, she's clearly someone who's achieved a lot in a brief amount of time and is someone that, uh, that you should be paying close attention to in the copywriting space. So don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I will be sure to uh, uh, give provide updates from Nav and, and uh, provide more valuable content from remote workers and digital nomads moving forward. So, and don't forget to hit that uh, bell icon too, because then you'll be notified when I publish content moving forward. So these YouTube videos right here might also provide some more value since the YouTube algorithm seems to think that they're going to help you out too. Own the day, make it yours. Take care.